Okay, great. Well, we want to welcome you all to this special COVID in the church presentation. Uh, we have with us uh, Jeff Reed, and uh, Jeff will be doing the lion's share of the meeting today. I uh, just want to make sure, as a host, I'm introducing all of you. And um, we, like I said, we had about 48 who said they wanted to be on. We've got about 31 right now, so we're probably missing about 17 people. Um, and when we think about what's going on with COVID, uh, we all believe that there's a permanent reset in the church. Uh, and one of the permanent resets that has already taken place for uh, the last 20 years is the ability to train disciples globally uh, with up to scale based on conversions and the needs for leadership development. And I've known Jeff Reed for many, many years. Um, and because they are church-based theological education under the auspices of each pastor, it's different than just bringing in teachings from the outside. Um, somebody in your church gets certified and uh, based on the DNA you have in your church, you present material that's based on biblical theology as the scriptures for itself. So it's not a topical or systematic theological approach. It's totally biblical, uh, uh, biblical theology. And, um, and the way they uh, train uh, their students is they try to give people a understanding of the biblical theology of the whole Bible. And then after that, they do uh, theology and culture. And that, that would be more for a doctoral student. But uh, all of that is similar, collapsed down to the beginning of first principles. That's the ultimate goal is to let every, help everybody understand the big story of God uh, through the scriptures, interpreting the scriptures through that big story, i.e. the biblical theology aspect. And then enabling people to uh, contextualize scripture with scripture, with the big story, and then apply it to culture. So I've been working with Jeff, um, had a close relationship with him since 1999, um, finishing my THD with Antioch University, just submitted the thesis for the second time. Uh, and uh, they also partner with many, many notable universities globally. Uh, so it's not meant to take the place of something if you have a program or you're a student or you respect uh, academia and the theological constructs that are out there. They partner with many of these universities. Gordon Conwell, I believe, is one of them. There's many. I don't even know all of them now. But uh, at the same token, a lot of these universities lack the understanding of the New Testament pattern and uh, being local church based and allowing, uh, you know, the big story to speak for itself. So uh, there are many ways to apply this in a local church. One of the things we're going to be presenting today is uh, the exciting way we as a cohort as a, of apostolic leaders can unpack, I believe, primarily the nine encyclicals together, one per month for nine months. It's a certified course, and Antioch is uh, accredited, I believe it's through regional accreditation, so it is official, you know, this tracks is regional, there's different ways, so it has the, uh, of accreditation, so it does have uh, the regional, so it's recognized by the, uh, you know, the school system, and and federal government um, and uh, and so whatever you do as a cohort with me I'll be leading this cohort um, if you wanted to apply it by your studies you could do that so that being said uh, I don't want to waste time uh, with you know I just want to get to the point most of you know each other so I'm going to let Jeff take it from there and I'm gonna look at the list and see if I have to text anybody a reminder. Uh, but Jeff, welcome and thank you for being part of this 
uh, cohort today, this initial uh, launch, and I'm just going to let you lead it from here. Good. Thanks, Joe. Um, do you know if um, everybody's got the brochure? Uh, probably not. Um, so do you want to email me a brochure and I'll, I'll start sending it out to everybody? I also uh, included a Dropbox link. I hope it uh, hyperlinks. If you copy and paste the Dropbox link, it'll open up uh, to the brochure as well. Oh, so why don't you just do that then? Yeah. I, uh, I, I have it for the screen, so there's okay. no problem. But uh, just if sometimes if they have it in their hands, they might be able to see it a little bit better. But I, I'll make sure that the, you know, that the screen's large enough and we'll make sure that everybody gets one right after. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm looking forward to today. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel a little weary of uh, Zoom. Uh, I'm doing two hour Zooms, two weeks apart uh, for eight networks and eight cities. Um, yours being a network and then recruiting for people to get on it is, um, you know, is a very tough. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to do quickly is um, put on uh, uh, it's it's a little less personal if I do this, but I think if you see it um, at the same time that you're hearing it, uh, it's more important to uh, see it than it is to see me. So I've got some notes that I'm going to start with before I put the brochure up. And I'm not always competent at um, getting the share going the right way. Um, host disabled attendee share screen sharing. Um, One sec, that'll be uh, updated to you. There so, I got it. Yep, you try it now. Sorry. Let's try it this time. Everybody see that? Did I come onto the screen? Yes, you did. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> for, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for over 30 years, I've uh, challenged pastors, <clears throat> excuse me, from every tradition uh, to return to the way of Christ and the apostles. And as we talk about it, many of you have read uh, my encyclical, the early churches from simple church to complex network for 20, I said 20, really, for, yeah, for 30 years. And almost always the response that I get is that makes sense. But it's usually followed with, what do you want me to do? Just start my church, start over and lose my job in the process? Well, guess what just happened? nationally and internationally. Everything is busted up. We've been successful with really large scale work uh, in China, India. Um, I'm not gonna talk much about that, but we just had one of these, um, uh, it wasn't a Zoom, it was a full training that was done by what many consider to be the most influential of the um, urban pastors in China. And he had uh, a hunt, over 150 leaders, 40 cities, and 17 pro pro provinces, all laying the same foundation uh, that I'm asking um, you to consider in this Zoom. Uh, the, uh, so internationally, uh, we have 75% of the large-scale church planting movements in India using our system. 
and huge movements in Africa, including, I smile every time I say it, including the, in Uganda, the National uh, Fellowship of Born Again Pentecostal Churches. There's 45,000 of them. And they chose Born Again because a lot of the churches uh, in um, Uganda are nominal. But in the US, we have really good uh, partners, we have good prototypes, we have in, in, in all different kinds of traditions, but we've never been able to scale this in, uh, in the US uh, because it just takes too much to redo things from the ground up. What I'm excited about with UCAL, um, US Cal, I mean, and CCC is that all of you are already in the kind of paradigm that I'm talking about. Although if you look carefully, most have built, still built things around a Sunday morning service uh, and uh, oftentimes Western discipleship uh, material, which I'm gonna talk about. So if usually I have the ability, if you give me two hours to offend everybody in the audience. <laughs> All right, so uh, just keep that in mind if you say, oh, why did he say that? Uh, and hear the whole picture. Um, also, try to stay on for the two hours if you can. Entrepreneurs, which most of you are, uh, are hard to keep focused for two hours. That includes myself. I don't like to uh, listen to anything for two hours, but you'll only be listening for the first because I'm going to do a fairly thorough presentation using this brochure. Um, and um, then there'll be just questions after that. So if we don't have a lot of questions, we'll, we'll finish early. In two weeks, not one, same, same time, Tuesday in two weeks, we're going to do a follow-up Zoom 2, a two-hour Zoom. And um, that's going to be how to start if you want to start. And our goal in all of our networks, um, eight networks, uh, US Cal and CCC being one, and eight cities that we're focused on, uh, in, um, in all of those, um, we, need, uh, a, we need the, uh, the people that, are at, that have said yes to the Zoom uh, to make a decision of how to start. Anybody can use our resources and build our programs anytime, but this is a very special package that we put together with some really uh, doable prices in the context of it, but we can't afford to economically to work uh, in a concentrated way, like is illustrated in this package, uh, if we don't have either 20 churches involved or um, with five seamens or a total and you'll understand why when we go through this, a total of 100 cements. Uh, and we can't do it without a build representative or somebody um, like Joe that's, um, uh, that is, really knows our stuff. And we got some extra strength here um, because Steve Hannett uh, is also deep into our system and uh, is uh, the most trained as a... Um, what we would really call an associate faculty. And so uh, we got the capacity here to be able to deliver the assistance into this kind of uh, program. Uh, and I'm not talking about geographical locations. I know that those of you that are here from US Cal and those that are, most of you I think are from CCC uh, and you're all over the country, some of you at different parts of the world uh, will still treat this as a a network and a cohort uh, that will, um, I think, be pretty um, uh, pretty effective. Now, um, I'm not um, I'm not from the Pentecostal tradition, although 60% um, of those that use our materials worldwide uh, are global Pentecostals. We got over 600,000 uh, in India. And my guess is that 500 of that 600 are what we would call global Pentecostalism. And by the way, on the encyclicals on the uh, uh, US Cal and CCC websites, uh, one of them is on global Pentecostalism and gives you a little bit of a picture uh, before COVID of how we see 
um, the spirit working. Um, I am on Joe's um, national council with U.S. Cal as I think the token uh, evangelical on it, um, on, on the executive council, I mean, or I mean not the executive, the national council. And also, um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say there. So this Zoom is the COVID opening day package. The second Zoom is how to start. And you'll have two weeks to think this through. And I've, uh, and I've listed here a whole set of ways you can uh, examine this. Um, <clears throat> but the problem is the churches are starting to open. And that's why opening day. And uh, it's um, we want to be able to uh, be of assistance in a significant way, which is why uh, we're moving this uh, fast. Okay, this is what I call <laughs> on your screen. Can, can everybody, is it big enough? Everybody can see it? Yes. Good, thanks. Okay, you have four main needs. Um, some of you, they're not big. Some of you, they're massive. But I will call this an evangelical attempting to utter a prophetic word. All right. Uh, you have four main needs. One is to rethink your church. Uh, I think it was you, Vince, when I was last week um, on the, um, uh, the U.S. Cal or the CCC that you said, we really need to go back to the New Testament church. We really need to go back to Acts and, you know, and look again uh, and then come forward back into the 21st century. But one need is you need to rethink your church. The second need, number two, is you need to build a robust team to assist you. All of you have teams, all of you have networks, but I'm talking about a robust team that can help you paradigmatically think through your own situation, your own tradition, and your own cultural setting and build something very dynamic. I'll show you Bronner's example in a moment. Uh, in, and I think you've got about 18 months to do that. Um, the third thing is you need a job shift program. Uh, 20 or 30 years ago, uh, in our, um, what we call life to the end, life stewardship and community, where you build a life plan, uh, I introduced the concept, uh, from, uh, uh, conversations and a book called job shift to the fact that the world is changing to a post job culture. Uh, and so, therefore, you need to create a portfolio of work. We're moving away from 40 hours a week, climbing the ladder, all the benefits until you retire. Now we're in a post-job culture. And so, uh, now, but we're now with COVID, um, it's, it's, it's on steroids because people are going to not come back to traditional jobs in a lot of cases. And so I think some of you are going to be looking at 20 at urban churches. And if there's any involvement in the inner city, some of you are going to be looking at 25 to 50% unemployment of your people and the ability to help them. Government access of things is out, uh, is out there, but the church is the heart of God's plan. And so as, a ch as churches, we now are in the business of helping our people develop a life plan and helping our people develop a work portfolio and set a successful trajectory out there. So you need to rethink your church, build a robust team to assist you, develop a job shift program, and develop a serious church-based disciples program. And I'll tell you why I didn't use the word discipleship. Uh, that is a Western paradigmatic word nowadays. Um, develop a serious church-based disciples training program. Uh, now, what I'm going to present to you on the brochure is an integrated package that's well-tested and available um, with, with the training and the kind of assistance we would give you in this package. We have, to rethink your church, we have a senior leaders executive education. Um, if you're familiar with executive education, if you're not familiar, look in the back of Harvard Business Review, and you'll see several of the top Ivy League schools 
um, Stanford, Harvard, having executive education. This is for people who already are at the top, aren't necessarily going to go after any more degrees, but they need their thinking sharpened um, as they continue to steer leadership. A second program is what we call our CMIN, Certificate of Ministry, Undergraduate or Graduate Certificate. Uh, that uh, the CMIN is, especially the Graduate Certificate, is a tool you need to work with, um, or a tool designed, really, to work with uh, building, um, uh, building a sharp team, uh, particularly with the additional focus of marketplace leaders and urban professionals. And then uh, the CMIN with job practicum allows you to be able to take the, um, uh, the uh, to build a job practicum apprenticeship. Uh, there's several, five or six different ways to be able to do that. And if they take the CMIN, the CMIN, if you look at it from an academic setting, is 15 credits or 16 credits. And if you look at a normal bachelor's, it's 130 uh, uh, credits. And uh, you can, if you do the CMIN with the job description and articulation agreement, you'll be able to move into the second half of a bachelor's, whether it's us or something like Clinton College. We have different agreements out there. Uh, but the development of a job shift program, CMIN, with a practicum, will allow you to essentially go into the business of equipping and helping your uh, people that don't have a job and are not um, uh, are not uh, being a, are, are out of work to be able to design a strategy. Uh, in this new world that we've seen work uh, many times. The third is develop a serious church-based disciples program. Uh, and so we have discipleship one and two program for that. Uh, and th this is very, very important, this fourth area, because I just have a, I have a study here uh, called the National Study on Disciple Making in the U.S. Churches. And uh, it just came out, it's sponsored by discipleship.org and Exponential. It just came out in March of 2020. And uh, 24 parachurch discipleship organizations um, are on this. And they laid out a pattern for discipleship that I'm convinced, and they're going to inundate the churches with these strategies across the country. And their argument is only 5% of the churches in the U.S. have what they call a, um, a, a disciple-making culture. The problem with that is that it doesn't work and it will gut the inside of churches. Uh, and I'll t tell you why again when we've got time to discuss it if you have some questions. But this is important because it's really what they call DMM, Disciple Making Movement. I've worked with this one form or another in North India and across Africa for 30 years. And right now, those of you that read my, um, my uh, Pentecostal and this uh, uh, Global Pentecostalism and the Spirit Encyclical, I'm working with groups that started with a form of DMM or DMM, and now there's 70% attrition in all these large scale movements, because they're following a Western discipleship paradigm, not the way of Christ and the apostles with the focus. Um, and, and so I, I'm saying that strongly because I want to come back to that because when you get into these discussions, it's going to be very tempting to, if you don't have an integrated disciple training program to pick one of these up, it's a lot easier than what we're talking to you about. Um, now, with that in mind, um, what I want to do is attempt to make a shift here. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a second and then um, reshare. And my brochure is not there. Okay, just a second. Um,
Sorry, I even practiced this. <laughs> okay, here's your brochure. And again, uh, you'll have this yourself. Uh, it's an eight page brochure. Um, let's see if I can get. It's an eight page brochure entitled uh, COVID D and the Church, the opening act of a paradigm shift in mission. The question we ask, and, and I'm going to go over this for a couple reasons, because it'll be in your hands, and that'll give you a good tool, particularly if you've heard me present it, that will give you a good tool for beginning to work with your leaders, because again, this is the kind of thing that uh, we have to act fairly uh, fast on. How will you open your church back up? It's time to rethink everything. The U.S. Western Church is never going to be the same. And the question to focus on is this one. Should our opening act over the next 18 months uh, begin a 10-year recovery of the old paradigm? Or should we return to the way of Christ and his apostles and build fresh new 21st century models? A lot of you are already on the path of fresh models, more like X and more like the early church. I'm going to try to refine myself here. <laughs> Okay, um, a lot of you are um, on this path, but I'll guarantee you, I know most traditions and most uh, uh, everywhere from high church to the traditional black church in the US to uh, the growing global Pentecostal type networks. And even though it's easier to work with um, uh, Pentecostals than it is with evangelicals because you're closer to the paradigm. If you really look carefully inside, you're going to see an awful lot of the Western paradigm in the forms of everything from how you do church uh, to how your people think. Uh, and so um, that's all going to change now. And some are going to say, well, we're going to get back to normal, not the new normal, the old normal, and go on what will be a 10-year recovery of the old paradigm. And by the way, already we know uh, from the uh, recent Pew study that was done is that we've lost in the last 10 years, 30 million uh, more believers that have left the, or more Christians that have left the church. Whereas in North India, following more closer to the way of Christ and the apostles, they've increased 30 million um, in, the, in comparison to the drop back. So, Either we'll try to long-term recovery of the old paradigm, or we got to think new. Now, we put together what we call an opening act 18-month package. Um, anything that's packaged um, like this, and I understand the risk of it, um, moves, can easily move me in your mind from an apostle apostolic leader to a salesman, <laughs> all right? And um, I'm doing this out of a conviction uh, that I believe now God is doing something very significant in the North American church. Uh, if you've ever seen the book, the, um, the Rise of Network Christianity, which is the kind of movement you are all part of uh, and that we're deeply involved with internationally, uh, you recognize that um, uh, there's before COVID, in fact, the last hundred years has been a growing movement uh, that I refer to as global Pentecostalism here and internationally that uh, is restructuring the church. Uh, but again, um, it's, um, it's, full, it's, it's not well thought through in many cases. And our executive education um, is uh, part of our training system. Our training system goes from, uh, goes from um, what I would say is um, uh, grassroots development of people all the way to doctoral level. It's an integrated system. For example, in North India, 
we have one lady who's completely in, in her, um, illiterate that got to the second level and she has two women under her or 200 women under her and they're all illiterate. So we can go from disciple to doctor in terms of an integrated strategy. Uh, the executive education uh, is there for um, senior leaders. And so whether you're um, the senior pastor, if it's a larger church, executive uh, pastors might be uh, fit here, um, or a bishop. But what we're saying is that if you're going to work with this package, we want one top senior leader, senior pastor, pastor, bishop, executive pastor, to go through this, to be the one who's thinking carefully uh, over the next 18 months about how to build something from the ground up around the way of Christ and his apostles. Um, the material is shown here, and we're going to look at this in detail next week, but let me remind you that on our website, you can get a look at all our materials. It's just uh, build.org, and you go to the uh, materials section, um, and everything is there for you to be able to look at. The goals, oftentimes the first unit, um, and besides that, the encyclicals is part of it, and we put free up there for you to download on both websites, uh, the CCC and uh, US Cal, so you can really get a, a feel. Um, the uh, way executive education works is um, there's one meeting a month for nine months. And then you get an executive education certificate from that. But it's one meeting a month for uh, about three in the afternoon till nine in the evening. And a lot of it will be built, or some of it will be built around the encyclicals and a roundtable discussion. So you'll read the encyclical and become part of a, a roundtable discussion. Then the next nine months in this package, once a month will be a two-hour roundtable. And so you'll um, wrestle with these ideas in the first nine months by dipping in to our system and be able to get the key ideas that will help shape things for you. And then you'll be in a round table if you want to for the next nine months with people who have gone through the executive education and are building in their own situation. So you'll be in a position of sharpening each other and learning what every, uh, learning from everyone else. And this will be done, you would be in an executive education. Um, I'll help launch it with Joe. A lot of it will be led by Joe because we, uh, in, in all of our, uh, ten, uh, eight churches and eight networks, um, our top partner there is an apostolic leader and will be leading this. And then this is something you could turn around and lead in your own network in the future. Uh, because we have to start with the top leadership. This isn't something that uh, can just be delegated off uh, because of all the paradigm battles that, are, that um, oftentimes surface in this context. Um, the second is what we call um, the, C -Men, the Antioch School C-Men program. Now, you can't uh, see it very well, but maybe I can make it bigger here um, for now. Um, no, because I'm not in the, uh, I should go to the better view. This is a screenshot um, of our dashboard. All of our degree, pro degree certificates and programs are what we call competency-based. Um, ours is a completely different system than our Western schooling system, our Bible colleges and our seminaries, which are fundamentally academic and fundamentally um, quantitative in uh, and uh, the whole testing system. And you don't have any guarantee, you have guarantee of some good knowledge, 
But in traditional education, you have no guarantee of competency. And according to Paul's list of Timothy's characteristics, characteristics of elders, deacons, leading women in the pastorals, competency matters. Um, character, yeah, and not just your knowledge of the word, but your ability to be able, I remember in Titus when he says um, uh, to Titus, I left you in Crete that you might set in order what remains. And that phrase literally means finished what isn't completed yet. The first thing he says is make sure you've got senior elders appointed in every church. Good character, good family, good reputation community. But the last two verses in Titus uh, 1, 8, and 9, they must have a firm grasp of the teaching, must be able to teach, and be able to refute those who contradict. Because as soon as you leave Titus, uh, false teachers are going to come in. They're going to upset a family. And because the church is a family of families, most of them were 15 adults that turned up the empire upside down. One family can come in and upset that family of families. So you got to make sure that that elder is so well trained that he has a firm grasp of the teaching, the faith, the deposit, the sound doctrine. He can teach, and that doesn't mean preach from a pulpit. What that means is in a home, in the context of a house church, they have to be able to explain the scripture clearly. And when that family is upsetting the church, they have to be able to refute it, which means he has to know the scriptures, be able to put it in his own words, debate it, and be able to, um, uh, to uh, convince and think on his feet and win the discussion. Uh, and so all of our material is what we call competency-based. And so this is a snapshot for those that are in a degree or, a, I mean, a accredited program, which the CMEN is, um, to be able to up, do your work and upload your own competency evidences. And then once that's marked off, uh, you're done um, with the degree or the program. Now, just shortly, we do have, and it's not what we're really trying to get you to consider right now, but uh, you um, can do our um, demon uh, instead of the executive education. Uh, and if anybody's interested, we can tell you that. Um, there is a semen mmin combination, uh, but for now, uh, the semen is, is the ball game. Now, the uh, who who would you put in this semen? Well, um, I think you want um, some key leaders or a couple key leaders um, that exist with you, and a um, some marketplace leaders and urban professionals as well. So you're putting together a robust team uh, that will will accomplish this over the 18 months, but work with you as a senior leader in, um, uh, in building something solid and dynamic and intergenerational out of the ashes uh, of uh, COVID-19. Uh, but uh, so, um, and what we're finding is that either certificate, but the graduate certificate is particularly attractive to marketplace leaders and urban professionals because they've already got their higher degrees but they think of themselves as laity or as not equipped for ministry and, or they're thought that way by the pastoral bunch. And um, uh, so it becomes very attractive, a something that really will train them uh, with their, everything from their life plan to be able to think biblically like that uh, senior elder I was talking about in uh, Titus one uh, and uh, we'll also, though, have uh, relevant, really relevant insight into how to move this into uh, culture. Now, a second thing you can do with the CMIN, and we said a minimum of five in 20 churches if we're going to be um, able to put the whole package together and the energy together inside these eight networks or eight cities. Um, uh, the, the second is a uh, a seaman uh, with a with a job practicum, which is already built. We've prototyped it in many places. We've used the 
life to the end life planning tool for a, a long time on this. But the semen with the um, job practicum uh, allows you to be able to get the same biblical foundation into a, a generation in your churches that you're now going to have to help find a job. And I'll guarantee you, uh, up until now, most churches have not thought of themselves as in the work of helping develop the life work of, of, their, of their people, of their leaders and of their people. But if we're looking at 25 to 50 percent um, arriving back in whatever kind of arrangement we have in our churches, not having jobs, unemployment, uh, it's critical that we equip them for the good works. You know that also in Titus, as soon as Titus is done, he's, I mean, Paul is done. He says, here's your key leaders. The church is a family of family, older men, younger men, uh, older women, younger women, older women, I'm sorry, older men, older women, younger men, younger women, slaves. Um, and then how the uh, older women are to help their young, the younger one with their household. That means the church is a family family. So when that's all set up right, and by the way, this is why, uh, no, no. Um, if it's set up right, um, he finishes and Titus 1, or I mean Titus 3, 14 and 15, let our people engage in good occupations and meet pressing needs. Good occupation is literally good work. Um, it's the concept of what we have traditionally looked at as job, vocation. Let our people be engaged in good occupations uh, and, and, um, and meet pressing needs. Uh, so part of our job is to be equipping people to mature in Christ, to understand the teaching, the faith, the deposit, the sound doctrine, and to be engaged in good occupations and good deeds, meaning pressing needs, in the context of our communities. But we've separated all of that. So the CMN is very important at two levels, that you build a robust top team to work with you, including uh, uh, the, the uh, marketplace and um, uh, urban professionals. And second is that you develop a process of maturing people, and, uh, and especially a younger generation, very important in the inner city. Uh, in fact, there's even a piece of this that we call rebuild, which allows us to be able to work with prisoners starting in prison and then get them in a rebuild in the context of a CMIN job practicum. So both those levels are critical. And one of the things you're going to need to do, and we give you all the steps for this, is when you get that um, uh, robust team and they're working in that CMIN, then, we need, then you need to put together a uh, small team of uh, marketplace leaders, uh, urban professionals that will be mentors and help those in the job practicum lay out their 18 month strategy for building their skills and work and getting paid in the process of it, uh, which by the way, will be uh, uh, able to be used as enormous ministry credit, ministry practicum credit in our uh, future degrees if anybody would go that direction. Um, and then uh, the third part is the first principle series. And again, um, this is serious ordered learning. The first principle series has a third ye uh, year to it, uh, or a third, this is series one and series two. And um, there's a series three, and then you can move into mastering the scriptures, which are the same kind of tools. Um, and it's critical um, that believers are involved in serious ordered learning. Uh, and of a type that develops them. Uh, remember again that uh, that um, uh, ty uh, the senior elder in Titus one, a firm grasp of the teaching, be able to teach and be able to refute those who contradict. You remember those of you that heard Dale Bronner, uh, Bishop Bronner, <laughs> um, 
the uh, uh, when he gave a testimony of Bill uh, in um, the last U.S. Cal meeting, he talked about the effect that this was having. And by the way, um, uh, Bishop Bronner has gra graduated over 75 leaders from our CMIN. And remember his testimony, he was saying, what's different about this is that by studying in this way, where you have to start with your study of the scriptures, you get some good reading input, you come together for Socratic discussions, then you do your own work on the other side of it. When you go through that process, not only does it teach you to think biblically, but it, te it platforms, it teaches you how to be able to think in your culture. So if you're putting the scripture in your own words, studying it and putting it in your own words, bringing it to a Socratic discussion, refining it on the other side, then you're prepared to do what Paul said was important for those elders to be able to do. And for all your people to do, your business professionals, uh, urban professionals and business, um, a lot of them have money and they've been around some ministry, but they can think biblically. Uh, so everything has to become integrated in a serious ordered learning process. That's what series one and two is about, which we call, in this case, Disciples One, Disciples Two. And notice the first book is Becoming a Disciple. The red one is just how to teach in this whole different style, which, by the way, is natural in small groups or house churches and is actually what the early church did for uh, 300 years as they turned the world upside down. Um, uh, let's see. So the, this is part of the program. So you got your people, and you'll just start. We'll train you, and then you'll uh, uh, just start the minimum right away, unless you want to go very large, the minimum right away of two small cohorts of 10 each, roughly, and, um, and begin this process. And after the first couple of books, you can multiply it very quickly uh, to a larger number in your, um, your, your churches if you desire. So the three parts here are ENIAC school, executive education, um, re preparing the top senior leader, leaders, bishop to, without having to go through our, all of our training and system and um, to be able to um, uh, to be able to really think freshly, Acts, the New Testament Church, the Way of Christ and His Apostles, along with tools that dip him in or her into that process. Second um, is the Antioch School Seamen for building a vibrant leadership team and for um, starting to be able to go very effectively into the business of helping those uh, in the urban and inner city, I mean the ur urban centers and inner, inner city especially, to be able to create a, um, uh, a, a um, job and a lifelong, to create work. And we have a, a work portfolio um, built around this, to be able to gain work, create work, and be on a path of um, developing skills uh, in the in the process of it. And then third is the ordered learning for your people. And see, all three are important because you got to rethink things here. You've got to uh, build a vibrant team around the, the new ideas. You can't build it alone. And, and you ha have to be able to help those 25 to 50% unemployed. And if you want your people to, to hang around, we can't have scattered discipleship. But instead, um, uh, you have serious ordered learning with a achievement certificate with series one and series two in that program that I believe will go a long way to keep your people from scattering. Now, back to this national study for a moment. Um, the problem with traditional discipleship material, Western discipleship material, is the paradigm is um, around everybody in the church coming into the church and developing a, um, a disciple-making culture. 
And the idea is that every believer is taught to make disciples that will go to the fourth generation. What that does is it shatters the integration of the church. The church is a family of families, uh, the, and the Acts is primarily a multiplication of churches, but not everyone is, uh, but the idea of uh, people maturing, being in churches, there being a shepherding strategy, there being an apostolic team that moves amongst them, uh, and not every believer has exactly the same gifts, and if every believer has his or her own disciples to the fourth generation, then you, um, you deconstruct Jesus' design for both the church and for the role of shepherds and leadership in that process. Everything flattens out at that point, and I've seen it all over the world for 30 years with large-scale movements that what happens is they start, they go up fast, and then they, um, then they start declining, and you have on the average in every movement I've been in, uh, in India and Africa in that way, you have about 70% attrition. One group planted 35,000 churches in a decade in North India using that system, this kind of DMM saturation church planting. Uh, when we got there to start working with them, there were only 12,000 churches left. And I'm, I'm saying that not to be critical, I'm saying it that 24 discipleship organizations are going to be inundating our churches that are in shock with a Western individualistic discipleship package. And then in 18 months, they're going to find out it doesn't work. You know, in this study, it says only 5% of churches in the country have a disciple-making culture. Well, these 24 organizations have been around for a long time um, in, um, uh, have been around for a long time. Uh, in the U.S., and only 5% of the churches um, are following that paired church model set inside the walls of the church. But they're seeming to infer that only 5% of the churches have a, a quality training program. I think it's a lot higher than that. I think that um, uh, for many of you, you're doing the kinds of things that the first principles would do, uh, and ultimately, as you see how we build programs, um, the, um, the ability to um, customize it and the ability to brand it and the ability to integrate your stuff into it as you build comprehensively is built into our system. Our tools you can learn uh, and can become the framework and backbone for rethinking this, for building a robust team and for serious ordered learning, but it doesn't wipe your other stuff out. Um, and um, you know, one example at this stage, I'll, I'll make a couple other comments, and then maybe we'll go after um, questions here. Um, but let me put, um, where did it go? Um, I'm going to get out a share here for a moment and try to um, find it. Um, Huh. Most of you have a, um, are on, well, then you, you would get off Zoom doing it. But when you're done, and I have it listed on the paper, uh, you can go to um, Bishop Bronner's uh, tool. And um, let me go back up here to, oh, here it is. Um, And that some of this might seem a little bit abstract to you. Um, there, can you see that? Uh, did that come on your screen? Yes, it did. Okay. This is... Uh, uh, Dale Bronner's Institute of Ministry and Leadership Development. 
and uh, it's beautifully done. Um, now if you notice across the top, you have training programs, degree programs, uh, partner church programs. But as you begin to scale down, you see, I'm moving myself around on the picture here so I can see it. Um, you see ministers, deacons, ministry leaders, degree programs, ministry servants, marketplace leaders, mantle, and then you have church partner. So what we've built with, with um, Bishop Bronner, this is basically our system through his branding and through his terms. Uh, for example, if you go to ministers, it's our cement that I've just been describing to you. Our materials are scattered through these others, but then you go to uh, the uh, degree programs and you've got um, the degree programs. He didn't list them all here. He did it in another spot. Um, but you, oh yeah, here it is. You've got your B men and your M men. He doesn't offer yet our D men uh, in partnership with the Antioch school. Um, but this gives you an example of uh, what you're gonna be building. Now, he's been building this with us for probably seven or eight years. And we have other prototypes, uh, network prototypes, and see his network, what's he saying to his network? So this is his church. He's saying to his network, um, let us, call us today, and let us design a leadership development program for your church ministry that goes uh, through all of these areas. So then he now is helping the 50 churches in his network. Um, but it took a long time to build it. When you go um, through this process, you're gonna be building your own thing, both in terms of your church uh, and in terms of your, um, uh, your, your core team. And uh, then you're in a position at that time uh, to begin to uh, help your network. But in 18 months, you're going to be doing the core of this in thinking through your own design, your own leadership development, and what your church uh, really um, will look like in the new strategy that's emerging. Okay, now let me get out of share here for a moment and then go back to, if I can, I think I'd be better at this, wouldn't you, that... Um, just uh, okay, a couple other things, and then we'll open it up for questions here. Um, there's a piece here on um, opening day, the benefits of this package that you can share with your um, leadership team if you are exploring this. Immediate results in the church will be uh, training trained leaders to lead serious ordered training groups. We do that in this, that's what that little red booklet was. A robust leadership team, a path for your people who need jobs in the ministry job practicum. Your people can start immediately and we're finding that um, you not will not lose people, but you're more likely to gain people. Um, as far as, um, then we have a series of quotes here uh, and uh, uh, in this case, Joe Matera, Lester McCorn, who's president of Clinton College that we have a partnership with, very innovative. And he leads a, a network that he's created of about 40 of the largest, uh, most creative of the traditional black church across the six black denominations. We have Paul Dean, who was sort of the theologian, if you would, for Acts 29. Um, and uh, is, is now pastoring one of the Soma churches when Acts 29 kind of divided up and uh, knows our stuff well. Uh, and in fact, is just still deeply involved. And then Ernest Thomas, who's the executive pastor, I mean, the pastor of discipleship at St. Mark Baptist Church, which is a church of, uh, it says here, Atlanta, Georgia, notes it, it's Little Rock, um, Arkansas, and um, a church of about 6,000. Uh, and he's doing a D-min with us and then integrating this into the training program. But there you have uh, quotes. 
In fact, what's kind of cool about um, about Ernest, there's a uh, the recent pandemic took us all by surprise, but some churches were more prepared than others to handle the new challenges we face. The Build Philosophy and Resources helped many churches in Central Arkansas, this is our Central Arkansas initiative, in Central Arkansas to thrive in the new normal of social distancing. Our network of churches, which includes local fellowships of different sizes and denominations, has continued to meet, train leaders, and conduct ministry. Build's insight and compassion for the inner city has served as a model for our churches to offer practical resources like a care center to families in need. The old way of doing church is quickly dying and Bill is leading the way to a more fresh and biblical approach. Okay, now I know reading the quote puts me from an apostle to a, to a salesman, but um, we really think this is an opportunity for churches all across our country, all different kinds of traditions to build something that instinctively everybody knows um, uh, is uh, that our that our Western institutional church does not line up in many many ways as far as as far as the church as far as leadership training as far as mission those institutions through the way of Christ and the apostles and to the way that turned the world upside down in the uh, first uh, three hundred years. Okay, um, I think. Uh, I, I'll uh, I'll leave the share there for right now. No, uh, no, I better not because uh, what I want to move and and Joe, I don't know how you want to do this, um, but I want to move now to uh, questions. Um, and and uh, and then I want to leave you with a list um, of about six things you can do in the next two weeks to fully investigate this out. Um, and so I'm, I guess I'm gonna have to go back on to, uh, I have to stop share to see you all. Oh, the way you're angled, Joe, it looked like your shade behind there looked like you were wearing a, a, hat. a, a mask on your head. Uh, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> sitting in my, uh, my room and is a uh, yeah it looked pretty funny yeah so uh just i wanted to before we have q a uh originally i thought you told me we're gonna have the second part next tuesday so you want to do it in two tuesdays which i think would be may 19th i know next tuesday i could do it i'm not sure about may 19th well we can do it next um we can do it next tuesday um what i need to do is is uh, put this other piece back up to answer your question. Um, and you're right, saying that would, um, I can save a lot of questions by looking here at um, uh, the, the steps between now and next time. And uh, yeah, you're right, Joe, um, I've got you scheduled for the afternoon in a week, but the feedback that I've been getting um, in some is that it's, they'd rather have two weeks um, to be able to go through these discussions. Um, if, you, if you notice the COVID, and, and so we're scheduled for next week and I'm glad to keep it, uh, but notice the COVID problem here on Zoom too, if you all can, can see that. Um, in fact, let me uh, again, put view up here, it's better. Um, the, uh, the COVID problem, <laughs> uh, we're presenting to eight networks in eight cities um, by July 1. And by the way, you're the, you were really the priority for us to go after here. Um, we have to prioritize, so there's two week decisions. Um, opening day is arriving fast. You have to act fast as a result. And uh, there's not a lot of lead time to consider this offer. Uh, but remember, you have Bishop Matera's full endorsement and look at Bishop Bronner's program online um, so that you can see it. And um, starting in this, if you get in it and don't like it, you can stop. Um, 
But uh, between now and next time, notice here we have uh, between Zoom 1 and Zoom 2, which will either be one week now or two, you can visit the BUILD website and note particularly North America Training System and Antioch School, I mean, uh, note particularly HIT Network, you'll see, and you'll be able to see North America. And the thing that I, the quote I just gave you from Ernest in Little Rock, there's a 15 minute video on how all these churches are working together in Little Rock. Um, and then in the training system, click down and you can click Antioch School and go to the Antioch School website. Under resources, you can see all our resources in executive education, the CMIN, and Disciples 1 and 2, the first principles. Again, you can visit Bronner's network to see our system in full development. There's four encyclicals, and by the way, um, the one I really encourage you to read, particularly if, if you felt kind of uh, any kind of reaction to what I said about this, this national study on disciple making, uh, um, I have uh, the first one of the encyclicals is from Jesus to the gospel. And all these are in, you'll see on the website, all the, the well, the ones that are on the US Cal and CCC website now are four of the eight of these booklets. But I didn't put this one on there, but we're allowing you to be able, during all this time, offer time and everything, to download these free and read them. But from Jesus to the gospels uh, is a, um, a very, uh, strong both critique of the Western discipleship paradigm uh, and its individualistic nature, as well as laying out a, um, a view of how to establish people in their faith, but also to take on the Gospels, because our belief is that the Gospels are greatly misinterpreted. They were tools for establishing churches that were written after Paul's letters, most of them, and assumed a certain knowledge now that everything made sense um, to the apostles. Uh, and so Paul's strategy in Acts, which is Jesus' strategy, which Jesus continued to do and teach, actually unfolds um, uh, a completely different understanding uh, instead of the Gospels being a way of more fully establishing people in the Krigma and keeping them from leaving the faith as Paul and Peter were dying. So, um, but this little encyclical um, is one you should read uh, up against this idea of the massive inundation that's going to come from 24 paradigm uh, or um, 24 pair church organizations offering the solution to our churches, um, and um, uh, so that's that's going to be also made available to you, whether we post it on the site or whether Joe you just um, email it to everybody to. Um, you know, to read. Uh, so I don't know what you want to do on, um, oh, let me finish this quick. Also, the, you can call Bishop Matera. He and I see a, have a common global vision and strategy together, or talk to Steve Hannett. Um, he will assist Joe um, and knows our programs inside out and is building a strong program in his own um, church and smaller uh, network. Um, and again, um, I, do, uh, I do apologize if you feel pressure, if it seems opportunistic, that is not my intent. But the compelling final prophetic word I feel from God, God is my motivation, as far as I can see. And also, I am an uneducated apostle, but God has used me and our team to build the finest global church-based university, I believe, worldwide in China, India, and Africa. And it was the uneducated apostles, by the way, um, that Jesus chose, that God chose in Jesus, um, a carpenter that he chose in Peter and John, who were in Acts 4.12, uneducated men. And even Paul was a carpenter, not, uh, not uh, uh, highly, um, not a scribal elite per se. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's really go after questions here. And, um, uh, Joe, what, what do you want to do? You want to do it in one week or two weeks? Well, I, I don't know if I could be there in two weeks. That's my anniversary. So even though this COVID, we're still very adventurous, me and my wife. So we may still go somewhere. We're never <laughs> held back by these kind of things. Um, but I, in my experience, uh, if someone's really serious about something and they have a week, 
if you give them two weeks, they'll wait till two days before the event anyway. Uh, <laughs> they're not going to take two weeks of investigating. They're just going to take a few hours. So I would, I would say let's try to do it next Tuesday. Okay. Uh, same time, same batch station. And if we uh, have a bunch of people say they can't do it uh, next Tuesday and they want to do it in two weeks, then you'll have to do it possibly without me, but uh, we'll figure it out. But well, I'm, not, I, I'm not doing it without you. I'll tell you that. Um, well, I'm thinking right now, uh, next Tuesday, May 12th at one o'clock. And unless I get a lot of feedback, uh, against that uh, we could always do it may 26th as well in three weeks for those who are serious because it's not like we're going to launch this thing uh in two weeks uh we just want to make sure that everyone knows what they're talking about i mean what they're getting into so anyway without further ado um i'm gonna just leave the floor open the only thing i would ask is anybody who asks a question because we are recording this state your name and your position and where you live. Uh, make it uh, a quick, you know, su succinct question. Uh, don't give testimonies, don't elaborate. We only have until three o'clock and there may be a lot of other people who have questions. So let's do quick questions and give a 30 second snapshot. So the floor is open, go ahead. Hey Bishop, this is uh, Darian Somerville. I lead a ministry called the Moravian Watch. Um, out of Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. And um, I have two questions. One, what's the demographic, the demographic um, just in terms of race, uh, that the, uh, this organization has appealed to and you know, how many people are involved? I'm particularly interested because I've heard you say uh, there's an appeal to the inner cities so the one question is, what's the demographic uh, mainly of, you know, this ministry appealing to African-American pastors? Uh, and then the second question is, when you say that this model uh, has a work um, where you can help people get work and it can become a resource, can you just explain a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about that? Thank you. Uh, yeah, Darian. Um... We have, it's, it's the first time we've been this targeted. And um, because of US Cal and the emphasis on networks, we chose the cover that we did. Um, but we've customized, you know, this brochure. And McCorn, uh, Lester McCorn's a, also a, a 30 year friend. Um, and um, he's uh, very influential in the traditional black church just like Bronner is, um, is uh, very um, well known in the uh, new emerging bishop network kind of black church. And uh, the, I've spent a lot of time with key black leaders uh, and um, key churches, uh, particularly with Atlanta as the base, um, uh, Craig Oliver, E. Dewey Smith, um, that whole big network kind of is influenced most by Lester McCorn. And Lester is a senior, uh, is a president of um, uh, Clinton College, which is an HBCU college, uh, which is really important to, to the traditional black church, the six main denominations. And, and Clinton is a uh, AME Zion, and uh, we're building a, a um, a partnership there that allows our whole package, which would include the job practicum, to be able to do two years of the four-year Clinton, and you could finish the best one. That's how committed McCorn is to us. And um, most of the churches in Little Rock are black churches. The two large black churches are St. Mark 6000 and Second Baptist, 4,000, I think uh, uh, one's a progressive and one's a, um, uh, I can't, I don't know for sure. And then we've got three others of that original eight that are about 500 size and a strategy that those larger ones become resource centers 
So all the, there's 2,000 churches in Little Rock, and a lot of them are inner city churches where there's a park, a store, and a small little, mostly black, and then there's Hispanic and other multi ethnic that have 50 people in them. Uh, the pastor's bivocational and beat up by the city. So we have a strategy in how everybody can work together, or how they, you can do this in a network. Very effective. Um, second, the job uh, practicum is, is, is really pretty simple, but we've built a system, and I'll introduce that to you next time, because the next time's issue will be how to start. But uh, the essence of the job practicum goes with the CMIN. So they get this core training, but one of the tools you'll notice on there, I don't have it on screen right now, but one of the tools is um, what we call life to the end, life stewardship and community, where you build a life plan. And in the, in the seven steps, to, six steps to that. And uh, one of them is basically building a job portfolio, and job culture. And um, some people will go back to work, um, but most won't. But even if they go back to work and they want to go through this, they can build, a, you can help them build a skills development system that meets the need of that job. If it's a, um, if it's a, a skill they want, they can maybe get a job as an apprenticeship, I mean, a job as a apprentice carpenter and then do an apprenticeship. Or they can be an uh, urban, there's an urban, church planning track. There's also a, um, uh, a entrepreneurial track where you start a business. And what people have not thought through, and I have this package put together as well, is that the issue is not small business as much as it is home business. Now, yes. and we get we put together a package that shows you um, basically the idea and how to start over one of 5,000 home businesses. <laughs> um, it's amazing the stuff that's out there. Uh, and so the idea is you have a small team that helps coach, say you got five people that are right away in that situation. They get into this training and then we have the whole, um, again, uh, I don't, um, uh, let me just, one second here. We'll look at this next time, but and um, we can send you this too, but it's urban center degree programs, which is just the certificate. But in it is um, six tracks, uh, community development, cultural creatives, marketplace church planner, wow. urban center artisanship, urban center entrepreneurship, and urban professional. You know that if you get back with a company or even a job, like nobody, you know, right away wants a job with McDonald's, you know, what are you gonna do with your life? If you have a job, a job, you know, at McDonald's, well, McDonald's has McDonald University <laughs> and you get into their training program and it's a massive opportunity. Uh, but, but people just, they don't think about, there are more people in the U S in our corporate quality universities, corporate universities like McDonald U than there are in our university system, or at least as many. Wow. So the whole paradigm has to be rethought. Thank you. That's exhilarating. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Now you realize that if you ask a question, I'm incapable of a short answer. <laughs> totally incapable of a short answer. Sell the car, not the engine. <laughs> Anybody else? I think that, uh, Dad, it's Elaine Ortiz. Hi, everybody. I'm Bishop and his wife's spiritual daughter since they got married. So I'm the, young, I'm the first child. Sorry, Jason. So what I wanted to say was that in the, in the encyclical from Jesus to the gospel, um, someone, I believe someone went on and checked for it and we wanted to download it too. Mr. Reed, is there a way to get a hold of it? Cause it doesn't appear to be there. Maybe there's another location we can. No, uh, what I'll do is um, um, I can send it. Uh, uh, what I'll do is um, uh, email the um, the PDF of it. Um, the um, it, believe it or not, it's actually not on our um, website either right now. The six R, the six little booklets, and um, the book itself. Uh, 
you've got the global Pentecostal um, on Joe's, uh, on CCC and, um, and also, by the way, as I mentioned it right now, um, let's see out here. <laughs> I'm holding the book up and looking at you, Elaine, like, like you're looking. <laughs> um, but in the back of these, uh, they're very readable, but very serious and paradigmatic related to acts. But in the back of every one is uh, four issues. In this case, uh, the issues are um, uh, so that you can actually take, and you could use one of these booklets, why, why we publish them in small books besides the book, is this way you can take it to a study group, you know, or a leadership, and read this and discuss it uh, in maybe four two-hour discussions on one day, or use it in a small group uh, for a discussion across the month to drive issues forward. Uh, but we'll see that you get it. We'll get a PDF um, show it to you and uh, uh, get it. You get it available to you right away. Thank you. Hey, Jeff, I do have a question. This is Sam, um, an army officer in Turkey. Right now. Yeah, first of all, I want to say thank you for your presentation. I kind of distilled down the, the context into three categories. You talked about individual transference, the fractured nature of passing down amongst multiple gifts, which is problematic with discipleship. As churches look at how do they empower, resource, and mobilize their people in their communities post-COVID, I see that you offer a system. I think I understood that the leader in the community has the ability to tailor the narrative that you give the, their individuals um, and you provide credentialed practical solutions. Um, one of the things that I do want to ask is as leaders look out in the community and they survey problems, do you one, provide tailored solutions or options that are already pre-made and they choose from? Or how do you help that leader to identify what practical solutions are needed in their area of influence? Thank you. Are you talking about from a, uh, a job? Or, yes. Or are you talking about from uh, impacting the community? Um, well, job first and then impacting the community second. Okay. Um, the, um, <coughs> the broader thing that I didn't talk about here, and you can see it if you go on our website, um, again, under um, uh, network and under North America, there's a 15 minute video there that shows you what we're doing in Little Rock. But Little Rock has created in partnership with us an Antioch initiative. And the Antioch Initiative is where several churches, they have eight core churches in the inner city. Several churches start this program, which I was just showing you. And in fact, the Ernest um, is in our D-men at St. Mark. Um, uh, uh, Pastor Ke Bishop Kelly at Second Baptist, which is 4,000, is in our D-men. So they're working at the, you know, the, the upper level. And there's cohorts, um, seven cohorts of about 20 people, I think, that are that the churches are working together on, um, besides building a specific thing like I just showed you as they start in each of their own churches. But those eight, the Antioch Initiative, those eight uh, churches, which we hope is soon 20, they've got 40 they've been cultivating, those uh, churches work together and go to the businesses in the community to help them understand that we want you to hire people from the inner city. We want you to hire prisoners. They're in this program. And um, uh, so they build a whole culture. Uh, for example, there's 2,000 prisoners being released through Little Rock in the next two years. You know, and 80% of them are going to go back, you know, if... Um, they're not helped in the right way. Uh, so they can ha get the training, come out to put a team around them to help them find a job and put this job portfolio, this 18 month plan together. 
Uh, and, but at the same time, you're cultivating the culture and a lot of businesses in the community. Well, we don't have time because of COVID to do that kind of cultivation in every one of the cities, but the system works. All we got to do is get a church to say, you know, here's the program that helps train you and your, and your robust team. Here's what you can offer immediately. And um, we also have uh, four in the package, recommend to you four um, of the uh, MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. One of them is Coursera. And uh, Coursera, uh, the second one is it, 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 that has 100,000 courses. <laughs> and you put in what your skill is, what your kind of job you're looking for, and then you can take those online free, but if you wanted a certificate for your employer or to be able to add to your resume, then you pay for the assessment on that certificate. Yeah. Um, and uh, tons of practical stuff. So we put the whole thing together and steps of how to build a practicum, and so you can do it. Ultimately, we want to influence the culture of the, you know, the businesses in the city. Uh, but uh, this is fine and is totally church-based. Good, thanks. Thank um, you. I, Somebody else? I have a question. I have a lot of questions, but I'll keep it to a couple. Um, <laughs> I'm John Hammer. I just took over a senior pastor position in Everett, Washington. My dad's on the call, too. I succeeded his leadership. He's an apostolic leader with a network. And we also have a Pentecostal Bible college of over 60 years that trains students around the world and locally in the Seattle area. Um, I've been very interested in discipleship making movements and gearing our church towards a discipleship structure that's people centric and not program centric in the sense that um, I use that term, I guess, meaning that I don't, I, I've, I've had a desire to see people move from um, becoming consumers of programs instead of being mobilized as the church using their gifts to organically uh, reproduce disciples, but wanting it to stay under the structure of a local church. So I resonate a lot with what you're saying. My first question is very practical. Um, do you have someone I can talk to, or I don't know if you want to answer this in a concise manner of how you can uh, uh, get work towards a master's or doctorate program within this system. I'm halfway through a, a master's program that I'm considering uh, leaving for something else. And I just wanted to find out how this practically works. And the second question is, could you tell us a little bit more about how does your discipleship structure work? Um, you said it's not like DMM because, and you kind of showed us deconstructed that briefly, but what do what, how does this practically work? Do people do ordered learning in their discipleship communities only like week to week? Do they do the a systematic Bible study and then they graduate or does that, is that like a separate learning community is separate from their, like their home group or their house church? Um, if you could speak to that practically, what does it look like? I guess a little bit. Okay. The uh, first question, I'll answer them quickly, but then um, again, uh, we'll, um, we'll, I'll give you a couple ways of being able to uh, go, go about uh, interacting with people on that. Uh, the first one, and the reason why we're, doing the package the way we're doing it and really staying off our degrees. This is an accredited um, certificate program, but uh, we can also set you up from the beginning with what we refer to as our um, CMIN, MMIN, Masters of Ministry combination. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that the CMIN itself, or you can go just straight into the BMIN, or if you have a degree, um, what, what, what degree do you have? I have a bachelor's in ministry, but I have a, I'm halfway through a master's degree program right now. Oh, okay. uh, a little over halfway through my credit. Yeah, my we, we, we have a number of combinations. And so if you do the CMIN, it would be a very significant portion of your MMIN. And if you did, as a senior leader, you did all three this package, um, we can actually, uh, you could actually be in the D-min and most of your D-min would be fulfilled. In our D-min, you don't have to do a dissertation. That's one of the things we got changed, but we want a, um, an artifact. So you do dissertation type research, but then you produce a book, you produce a training manual, you produce a course, um, or in this case, you produce your whole new future, <laughs> you know, in an artifact. 
uh, and use this practical prototype as um, uh, this 18 month thing as a, as a significant portion of that. Um, the second question is, um, uh, the way I would describe it, everyone is to become a mature disciple using his or her gifts in the context of the church being a family of families and in the context of the, the smaller church, uh, not so much cell or small group, but really a church that um, in a church of churches is part of the multiplication of that church. So everybody's reaching out at the same time, but everybody's not trying to make a disciple that will, you know, uh, you have a hundred people making their own disciples that are going to uh, multiply for four generations. Christ's plan is, I believe, when you study Acts, is a multiplication of churches. And in the context of that multiplication, uh, as, the, as the individual churches grow and two or three are going out sharing their faith, another one spontaneously emerges, you know, as a uh, church. In our own situation, we roughly have uh, 12 churches, I mean 20 house churches, and about a dozen of what we would call emerging ones. But what happens is I, I have an apostolic team of 15, and um, then we have about 85 leaders, elders and deacons and, and leading women that are leading the house churches, all right? And uh, then each house, about every four house churches, we have a cluster. And then we have a senior elder, uh, six senior elders, six major clusters, and then we have the whole church um, that, uh, because we're a church of churches, but they're not just small groups, they're really churches in, in clusters. Then we have uh, all of our leaders, um, that hundred or so that are listed there, all of our leaders are in uh, a discipline program. Um, and some of those uh, uh, courses are held in clusters. Some of them are, um, uh, everybody can join one of them, you know, in, um, uh, it's just the, the plan is ordered, but it's around and all over the place. But every one of our leaders uh, is in this educational process and has a portfolio um, that's robust and assessing with it. Um, but it's all done. It's what we call, uh, even though we're accredited by distance education for distance education, we fit there, but we're really producing what we call situated learning. So, and that's where education is going. So situated learning is um, where you learn in your situation, like Paul training Timothy or, or Paul training the elders. And remember the senior elders that he's talking about there in Titus, Paul spent three years night and day training the Ephes Ephesus elders. And that's about exactly how long it takes to really lay the right foundation. And that's how our material is, um, you know, is oriented. Um, by the way, accreditation, we're accredited, there's the Department of Education, it has CHIA that accredits all the accrediting associations. They accredit essentially DEAC, Distance Education Accrediting Commission, uh, which we think is the finest um, of the new world that's coming up. It's a national accreditation, actually. And um, uh, we consider ourselves leaders in that. Um, and so it's... Um, it's not a jerry-rigged thing. It's uh, we're, in fact, we're credited as a, it's a secular crediting association. We're credited as a university, um, not by religious uh, accreditation. Uh, I had a quick question, if it's appropriate now. Go ahead. Uh, my name's Derek Ott from Phoenix, Arizona. Just wondering what uh, Bishop Joe or Jeff would suggest for, um, Unlike probably most of the people on here, I'm starting over. So I, I have a 20 year history of ministry, um, done some pastoring, but I'm, I'm like grassroots starting over again. What, what path would you recommend uh, within your system regarding uh, education? Thanks. As far as our degrees and that sort of thing, you mean? Uh, yeah. Um, what, 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 so when you say you're starting over, you're saying now, 
you're not going to be leading a church or network. You just want to start training. I, I'm saying I believe that's in my future, but I I find myself in a situation where I don't currently have a congregation. So I'm I'm wondering what would best equip me to uh, to do what you're what you're saying. Well, Derek, I would I would suggest you be in my executive cohort. And then uh, you'll get all the ideas. You'll go through the encyclicals. And then when it's time, because you're part of CCC, you know, he's both in the marketplace, church place. Uh, when it's time, then, you know, we'll coach you through that. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Jeff, uh, Dan Hammer, Senior Apostolic Leader, Sunrise Christian Center, Seattle Bible College President. My son, John, asked uh, some of the questions. I was wondering how would this integrate into a already um, an existing Bible school? Could you see this as being is it integrated to start a whole separate program? And it may be with other people, they might want to ask the same things. How could you integrate some of these things into what you're already doing? Yes, um, uh, thanks, Dan, for that question. Yes, we have um, we have partnerships all over the world with schools, um, and the way we think about schools is. Uh, we don't, um, if, uh, and we also have an executive education um, program like the one we're showing you here for theological educators. Um, because uh, the traditional residential schools before COVID um, were uh, on their way out because of the innovation that's coming and technology as it really develops. So, and, and in a paradigm chart I did, a school needs to move eventually from residential to resource center. Um, and, uh, but we're smart enough now to realize, and my paradigm papers talk about that, especially the ones that were written back in 92, 93, 93. But um, the, um, the simple idea of that is that we don't mess with the residential, um, but we help you build a resource center alongside it that will be the future. Uh, and, um, but there's so many ways we can build. We just uh, finished with Clinton College, um, which is a four year college, uh, historic black um, college and universities is what they're known. And, um, and uh, I've uh, been, had a, um, a relationship with the president now, um, McCorn for 20 years. And um, it, it's, it's not that hard to do. Um, and uh, if, if you're accredited, uh, what we're doing there is we're taking our package, which is the CMIN and the job practicum, and building an articulation agreement that allows them to accept someone in their third year of their bachelor's at the, um, after they've finished our package. So now their faith is established, they got a job, but if they want an HBCU, um, which is important in particularly in the traditional black community, um, then there's a way to do that in their new online program now. Or um, if you have a program and you want to keep that core and its DNA and the name of your program, you know, and, and, and everything, then we can build a partnership where you put that in, into a, a, a significant practicum space, which actually in our the men can be 40%, believe it or not, of job practicum, uh, and it's all accredited. Um, or if you're already accredited, then we just, you use what part um, in, in, in our packages, and then we do an articulation agreement of mutual you know, recognition on it. We have enormous flexibility because again, we're a competency-based um, university. And what that means is that we're majoring competencies. And so people come into our upper level programs with a lot of ministry experience if they can develop competencies. You don't even have to have pre degrees, you know, in many cases. That's all flexible. I mean, it's measurable, but it's flexible. And that's what the future is going to be. But the schools never do it, you know, because, you know, you know what the traditional, uh, the best HBCU. Um, universities, um, uh, or I mean, black colleges, um, their tuition for four years is $100,000. Mm -hmm. 
and residential. And you even take Liberty University, which has 100,000 um, uh, online, it's $60,000 for a four year online degree. And when you're down in our territory, you know, you're down uh, uh, one fifth that um, of anything, you know, like that. One tenth um, of what would be the, the residential degrees and one fifth or less of what would be something like an online with them because it's situated. We're situating you to train your leaders. And all of a sudden, the world changes at that point. You could go to scale at that point. I had a question. Jason Matera here, I'm based in Seattle. And forgive me if you already touched on this, I had to step out for a few moments. Uh, I don't lead a congregation, but I'm interested in some of your your programs and the first principles courses caught my attention. Um, how would that work? It's almost like what Derek was saying. It's what if you're not looking to use this to build um, or integrate it in a church? Because I don't run; I'm in the marketplace. Um, what would be, uh, you know, what would be the route to take? Um, well, there's several um, that you could take. Um, Jason, the, um, uh, if we go back to China for a minute, it may sound like I'm jumping up to the moon to answer your question, but um, the right now China has grown since 1967 from 5 million to over 100 million through primarily rural house church movements, the five families. We work with three of the five families, by the way, using our system. Um, but a, a good partner, um, uh, Hugo John in, um, in Hong Kong, uh, who's about my age and uh, very well known, started a house church movement that grew to several thousand, et cetera. But his, he said, when, when he looks at China now, uh, the next hundred million are gonna come from the marketplace. Um, and when you look at where the openness is, in the US, it's more the marketplace. And so um, you can take one of our degrees and we can tie you in with a cohort, which is one way of getting everything. Um, or you could do a, um, a package like this, but you do the executive education, then you pull together a team of marketplace or urban professional leaders and take them through the CMIN. And, and then uh, start some small groups um, with the M, uh, with the uh, first principles. And by the way, there's tremendous number of babies out there as a result of um, uh, Alpha that have become Christians. 10 million people worldwide have gone through Alpha. They're done in 11 weeks. And what do you do? Well, you can put those in one of these groups because a lot of alpha is marketplace too and um, uh, start a small group. But in other words, if you did the training and then you brought together some marketplace or urban professionals to do the seam in, let's say five of them um, with them, and then you can tie it into a seam in, M min combo in the future if you want. Um, uh, and um, but where I'm ultimately going with this is that in the marketplace, um, I think we need church planning movement started um, out of our businesses. You know, um, uh, Chadwick Mohan, who was our first demon and pastor of an in, uh, Assemblies of God in Chennai, it's the largest church in India, 35,000. They've now built five hubs, but how they're building the, the church rather than the centralizing is around those hubs are wells. And like the woman going to the well. And all the wells are marketplace leaders using their businesses, coffee shops, et cetera, you know, to start a, 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 a essentially a church planning movement inside uh, the marketplace itself. So uh, you can either just you buy our stuff and use, I mean, you can just, you know, use it. Uh, anybody can buy Axe courses that are the key to the, the degree programs or the X course, and there's a bunch more. You can buy the first principles and just use them, or you could put together your own comprehensive plan, like what I was talking about, you know, and still do the 
the offer of what we're sh what we're showing here. That's the best I can do that quick. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. Hey, <clears throat> this is uh, Stefan and Seriani in Portland, Oregon. Oh, it's stuck. Um, okay. I don't see you on the screen. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, I am. Um, this is Stefan Seriani. I'm in Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm the head pastor of a church, uh, like house church organization. I'm also a uh, head pastor at Glenfair Family Church. And I've got a few other roles, but uh, not about hats, but more about questions. I have a few. Um, the first one is pricing and level of commitment to time wise to the different courses. Um, that would be my first question. And then my second question is, what is the, um, the theological narrative of the way that you teach your educational system? Um, which I know you, you can't answer in this short of time, but uh, probably, I mean, you're, you sound really smart. So I was hoping that somebody else would ask it smarter than me. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the theological, what was your first one again? Pricing, pricing and uh, yeah. We'll go over that in, in detail as we finalize the package um, next uh, week um, or when we meet. Uh, but uh, our degrees are, um, I mean, the, um, uh, the degree, the semen is 3,000, but we're spreading it instead of one year at 250 a month. In this package, we're spreading it to um, 125 a month for um, uh, for two years, and um, the uh, the bigger degrees, I mean the the full degrees are t um, the B min and M min and D min are twelve thousand dollars, two fifty a month spread over uh, about four years. And that is compared to an average residential degree of 80, 90,000 and a degree like Liberty as um, uh, 60,000 for the online beam in. And the reason why we can do it is we're situating you um, to be able to do the, to do the training. Um, yeah. And we haven't settled on for sure that the seamen adding the job, on there, but basically we're uh, saying that if probably if you do the semen, which would be uh, 125 a month, and the whole job practicum, we would just add on like a, a $500 or $600 program fee, which ultimately met if you did that whole thing and then se accepted the articulation agreement, um, you would uh, you would get a um, an associate's degree. I mean, not, I don't want to make a, you, we would get an associate's equivalent that some, that we would accept into our M men, obviously, because we created it, but that also uh, a, a, a school like McCorn in um, Clinton College would accept, you know, as a, um, uh, uh, an associate's degree equivalent in an articulation agreement. So then that means that that whole thing would cost them, uh, would cost basically two years, would cost um, uh, uh, practical, at a practical level, two years would cost about $4,000 for um, the student. But at the same time, and we know that people without jobs in this job practicum, they do have to get some kind of work. But if you're a church and you've got five that are going into this right away, if you're a smaller situation, um, then put together a benefactor team and have somebody sponsor them, you know, um, have to give you a credit card. They don't have to put it up front, you know, and, uh, uh, draw, uh, 125 out, out per month from someone who would be willing to be a benefactor, you know, marketplace leaders, uh, urban professionals, that sort of thing. It's very, very affordable, but still, I don't want to get into it and promise everything till the package is, yeah, the pack that'll be for our next meeting. I mean, it's basically done, but it'll be for our next meeting. But okay. that we're trying to make it a more affordable than what it's been is what we're trying to do. The narrative is very uh, simple to describe, and that is that 
in our Western curriculum, we've lost the narrative because we've fragmented the curriculum into Bible theology, church history, practical theology, that is like going through a cafeteria that multiplies forever. And the church, as N.T. Wright has said, has lost the narrative. The narrative is our framework. That's in the story, and you can look at it. Um, N.T. Wright's been a big influence um, on me. But way before that, uh, I was uh, mentored for 30 years by Walt Kaiser, who I consider the father of Old Testament theology, as well as, um, uh, although he's liberal more, is um, Childs at Yale uh, in um, the old use of the Old Testament of Scripture. But basically, we put the biblical framework together, the narrative together, and then we do biblical theology, theology, and culture. And what I mean by biblical theology is you let the Bible categorize itself. Authors of ten, clearly define a book, then of canonical sections, Old Testament, New Testament theology. Then you learn how to do theology and culture. In, in your context under the concept of the story. Um, mm. and But so we completely shatter traditional Bible college curriculum um, and start from a different framework. But we can still build, like I said, partnerships with schools and not mess with their existing system, but, uh, and allow some of our courses to be used. But we have a, a we're from a traditional theological encyclopedia as it's called. Um, how you arrange and put the whole thing curriculum together. Ours is uh, Bible, biblical theology, Old New Testament theology, theology and culture, very different than the Western categorization. You know, if we're from Venus and they're from Mars, or, you know, however that mm -hmm. analogy goes. That's, that's um, as quick as I can do it. Yep. Okay, it. so as we are getting ready to wrap up this meeting, we only got a few minutes left. Uh, what is the uh, w next week, Jeff, we're going to cover, this is for people who are interested. So next week you're going to get into more detail related to the cost and you're going to get into more detail related to what, why should somebody get on next week? Just give uh, us a snapshot. Okay. Let me get the right one up here. Is that on there? Yeah. It's sharing? Yep. Okay. Um, actually, I probably sh maybe should have gone back to the brochure, but um, uh, next week, um, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have that one here, but um, between now and then, well, between now and then, there's an enormous amount of resource available to you. Um, the website, like I told you, um, materials, everything, testimonial, uh, um, BronnerNetwork.org. Uh, um, uh, Joe, I think I'll, I'll send this to you as well um, that you can send to people. Um, and uh, the, the encyclicals, as well as conversation with um, Bishop Matera or Steve Hannett. Han Han I always call you Hannett. Um, the, um, but the goal is to, um, in the second one, is to say, Zoom 2, as it's listed here, how to start. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll get into the details of each one of those programs so you can see what the package is, and we'll, um, we'll look at pricing. Uh, but I've also got a, a piece that you'll get, uh, which is this on urban, for the, for the uh, job, um, uh, the seamen with job um, practicum. Uh, it's a nice piece that looks at every track, but then we've got an eight page piece on the urban uh, center uh, CMIN degree that talks about how to start, definition of tracks. You can put anything you want in any track, um, but the tracks are useful. Uh, okay. And the job practicum, how to start it, uh, the material here on, on uh, that helps you on choosing a track, and then these home base packages, uh, the MOOC passages. So you can just see 
um, how to put the job practicum together. So I want you to, to, I want to take you inside a little bit. So the first hour presentation will be to take you inside the, the executive education, to take you inside the uh, and, and, and inside the urban one track particularly. And then we'll talk about costs and, and uh, uh, how to start. But, I, but we got to take seriously the fact that we need um, uh, it's, the, the bottom line, if we're going to, anybody can just sign up and do our degree. You can go online and, and sign up right away for the, the CMIN, you know, for example. But the, the, to do it right is the way we're talking about it here. And we can't really do it right for one or two groups. If we're going to impact a network, and we got eight of them that are like US Cal, that we have a very top person um, choosing to promote this at this time with us. And so we got to have about 100 CMINs um, to be able to make it cost effective um, and be able to provide the, the additional um, services and, and uh, to help guide you in that job practicum. Because see, we're, we haven't offered the semen job practicum before outside the context of an Antioch initiative. We've already got a team and a culture, you know, situation there. But actually, we were going too slow as we look at it now. And so we hope uh, this is a major, major answer um, to, um, uh, let me just give you one quick, or I guess we're out of time, but give you one quick example. We have a rebuild program in our own churches, and we have 11 in it. They're in a three-year program, but it's part of the, uh, it can be part of the CMIN. And it's what we're doing with this job practicum. Uh, we had a young lady who is um, a, um, uh, in high school, senior year, not going to graduate, unwed mother, um, and a um, uh, undocumented uh, Hispanic person. So we moved her into a home, built a team around her, helped her finish high school the first year. Second year, we worked on life skills. The third year, she said, I want to be a dental assistant. So she did her certificate in dental assistant, but we helped her get a job, not that high a pay, to work with a dentist and the experience of that. So you can create these things. But for though now, because it's an emergency, we're going to start right out with the job practicum uh, together with our, with our CMIN uh, because we know that that works and we'll build the culture in the city by starting. So I'll dig into each one of those with you. Then we'll talk about, and I have a specific list there for how to start and the costs are roughly what you were hearing, um, which again means that um, a church, even a small church could decide to do this if they paid for it themselves because we're spreading out at 125 a month, six, 7,000 spread out uh, is all they would have to do to sponsor this for five of their people or something like that. So there's all kinds of, and I'll talk about some of those packages and ways to do it uh, next time. Okay, so um, if somebody was to do the executive cohort with me, but they didn't have a church or they didn't have five people yet, can they still be a part of it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but there are two things that are happening, uh, will happen there, uh, Joe. One is um, you, um, even if this doesn't work, even if after everything, there's a couple churches that, that want to do it, um, we, can, we can show you how to do it. And there's somebody, um, and um, uh, Steve Hannett is, um, helps Joe now and can do a lot of the certification training. So things are available. I'm just talking about, you know, the whole package itself and being able to um, work with networks on that package. Um, the, um, uh, but it, it's, it's all put together, as you know, Joe. So, and um, you're going to be in mine besides. I'm doing one with the key partner of all these different groups, and then they're trained to be able to do this uh, um, in um, for the leader of all the churches that are in this particular cohort or package. But you could easily invite people into that into years, Joe. And um, it's um, uh, yeah. I mean, and I can just even if even if 
your CCC and US Cal networks that are that are here, mostly CCC, don't want to move ahead, or just a couple do, they can. Um, and uh, we can still do the um, um, the executive education. And uh, you've already worked with a lot of stuff. The backbone of it is the encyclicals. And there, there's eight of them. So that's eight in the nine months. You do one encyclical and then discuss it for two hours. That's one part of the engine. The other is the life development engine and, um, uh, and the life plan. So it, yeah, you can do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, send out another event bright to everybody who was invited to this and we'll do it for next week. And, uh, and all of you will have to respond through the event bright to get on next week, May 12th, one o'clock, one to three. And this will be to do a deep dive to teach us how to begin the program. So we appreciate your time, Jeff. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great joy to work with you and uh, to be a friend for over 30 years. And, um, you know, you've been a great help to the body of Christ. And I believe that the North American paradigm is greatly challenged and will want to enact this kind of program. So uh, thank God for you and what you've been doing all over the world. So we're going to close in prayer and an event, Eventbrite will go out in the next day or two with the details. If you want to communicate with me via text, of course, you could do that. And um, I appreciate uh, our friendship and fellowship. I'm really excited about doing executive level cohort once a month, uh, deep dive, doing theology and culture together, going through these encyclicals with others who think like us in the uh, New Testament pattern. So I, I hope you all consider joining this. So Vince, can you close in prayer for us? Will do. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the information that's gone forth today. Uh, Holy Spirit, we're relying on your wisdom to help illuminate our decisions, uh, continue to speak to the heart of you. Part of this program, make unite and we all come together grow uh, into your image and it's in Jesus name we pray amen hey Joe let me let me mention one thing to you quick um, if you see this that fits right on the back of the computer um, Sam Sun not Samsung uh, I put it up I turn around and put it on the top of the computer it's a little bitty microphone and I was having a lot of trouble uh, with uh, stuff cutting out um, just like some of you have. And if you get that, this, plug it into your computer, um, that's all gone away from, you know, from my side. So it's, if you're on this a lot and you're having um, cut out, uh, that solved it for me without getting another computer. Okay. So, uh, and you're going to send me something for everybody to research in the next week related to build. So, or I just tell them to go to build.